national honor for the king of the world. Our devotional reading is Exodus 1, 8 22. Our background scripture and our printed passage are the same. Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 through 15. And would anybody like to lead us in a brief word of prayer? Oh, yes. Lord, just thank you just for another day, this day, blessed day you have allowed us to see. We thank you for watching over us throughout the night and open our eyes to a brand new day. We will rejoice and be glad in this day that you have given us. We ask of your Holy Spirit to be with us as we are gathered together in your house to study your word. We ask you to be with the teacher which you have placed in his heart to share with your people, Father, that your spirit to move within in him the word of God, and let our hearts be open and our minds be open to receive what you are giving us this morning. We thank God for all those who have joined us this morning via Facebook and all that are here in attendance as well. We ask for your many blessings over this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, the title is called International Honor for the He's a whole lot. <laughs> um, anybody want to read the lesson? Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold frankincense and mirror. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is coming to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, we start off, and here we go with this dude, King Herod. <laughs> and it says, in Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Herod was trying to kill Jesus. Yeah. He was plotting. But he, he was doing it in the backwards way. He was trying to make himself look good. And, and it tells you at this time Herod was plotting to kill Jesus. And he is asking the wise men where the baby was being born at and at what time. But he ain't know. But he wanted to know. But it wasn't to do the good things. He had bad things in mind. Now he called them after he had received information that the Messiah had been born. So he had information, so he was checking up. Because he was nervous. And you can see this in verse 1 of this chapter. But look at this man and his true plans in verse 3. Anybody want to read Matthew 2 and 3? When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. And all Jerusalem with him. What was he disturbed about? The Messiah was being born. Oh, that's right. He was called the king. <laughs> yes. He was getting ready to step over my game. Uh -huh. So so he was bothered with him. He, who going to come and take power and be king of the Jews and all these great things that come upon that name that they keep talking about? And I'm the king. Mm -hmm. So this was a lot of ego for him, too. You know? And he was an evil dude. Now, to let you know that Herod was jealous, a liar, and afraid, and we will see that later, you, 
could also see that even with him having knowledge of where Jesus was born, if you look at Matthew 2, 4 through 5, I want to read that. When he had called together all the people, people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them when the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. Now, even with this knowledge, because you notice he, he has quote unquote religious folk about Jesus, the Messiah. But even with this knowledge, it did not do him any good. The Lord will protect you at all times. And he was protected. Jesus is the son. Anybody want to read? And we're going to see who else he protected, but we, we're going to go with Jesus right now. Anybody want to read 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3? So we know who the evil one is, and that means his vessels too. <laughs> and Herod was a vessel. Herod was after the destruction of Christ. He wasn't trying to lift him up. He wasn't trying to praise him. He was looking to do just harm to Christ because he was getting ready to mess up his so-called game. He didn't even understand the true meaning of what Christ was doing, who Christ was doing. He just heard he's going to be king of something. That, that's with me because I'm king of everything right now, my area. If he'll protect you from the evil one, then he surely will protect you from the people serving him. Herod was evil, and although he knew the scriptures, he knew the scriptures, he thought that he could outdo God's plan. That, that's what his thought was. How are you going to kill the Messiah? Well, it ain't your time. Jesus told you when his time was, and even when they were thinking about killing him, he said, it ain't my time. So how is this King Herod going to try to outdo God's plan? God's plan was for Jesus to be on the cross. Mm -hmm. King Herod was trying to do something that wasn't in his will well to do. So you said he, know, he knew the scripture. He knew the scripture. He but knew he, about what it was going to happen and he where was he was Roman, at. Right? Yep. But he didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in God. I didn't say he got to believe in God. No, him. no, no. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But he didn't believe in God. But that's what... The point I'm trying to make is these people that call themselves atheists and don't believe in God, they must believe to a certain degree if he's oh, yeah. blind. <laughs> hey. You know what I'm saying? And he was moved to try to stop it. <laughs> when you try to prove that God is not real, you're already telling us that you believe that he is real or you wouldn't have to prove it to right. yourself. Right. That's, that's what they try to do. And also you can see what's going on, that God uses whomever he chooses in his plan. Herod had no idea that God was used, God was using him for a prophecy to be fulfilled. So I also see that, you know, yep, it's going to come here, out. No matter who you are. Don't make a difference. You can't outdo God. Mm -hmm. And that's what Herod's problem was. He was trying to outdo God's plan. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that too because <laughs> that's, that's making you think way beyond your pay grade. So the reason for the star was to know the age of the Messiah when they when he asked about the star and when it was up, and in order to make sure that the Messiah was killed, he came up with two years old, because the star had to have been up for about two years, okay? And it was probably seen about two years prior, because they had, remember the Magi had to make that trip to see Jesus. It wasn't like they was next door and he could walk right in. He was anxious to see if the Jewish prophecy of the birthplace of the Messiah agreed with the indications of the star to the Magi, and he kept his plan to himself. You notice he didn't tell them, hey, y'all, tell me where Jesus is being born at this Messiah, because I want to kill him. He, he lied about it. And there you go. He, he was falsifying. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. Look at this. Right off the bat, he he got him doing some work. And he thinks he's getting over because he said, go and search carefully for the child. Careful. This carefully ain't a concern carefully. This carefully is a deviant carefully. Yes. As soon as you find him, because I want to kill him, but I ain't told you that. <laughs> report to me. It, not report to us. Not so. He just said, report to me. And then he said, a lie. So that I too may go and worship him. Okay. Well, if you really wanted to go and worship him, you could have went with him when they went. Uh -huh. 
I'm just, I'm just saying. But so after Herod interrogated as much information, because this is what he did. This is what he truly did. After he interrogated as much information as he could get, then he sent out his people. They unknowing he thinks of what they're doing. He did not go himself. He sent the wise men so they could see him, and then they were to bring him back confirmation. See, when I send you out, I want you to make sure you got the right one so I can roll up on the right one and do dirt. The worship part in this is a lie. Because he was plotting to kill this king. Herod was an evil man because he was also planning to use the good wise men in deception. And have them think that he was planning to do worship. He wasn't planning to do no worship. <laughs> the last time you worshipped somebody and killed him. He was planning to do wrong. So he had good plans and they were set up nicely in man's mind. You notice I said they were good plans and they were set up in his own mind. Can't outdo God. No. He couldn't outdo him. But he didn't know God, and we can't stop God's plan. We don't get to stop him. We ain't got that kind of clout. Anybody want to read Proverbs 15 and 3? The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. So if he blesses the wicked and the good, if he showers them, guess what? He's checking up on you too. He ain't going to let wicked prevail. In short, you busted, Herod. And whatever plans you think you've made, the Lord sees them. Yes. And will handle that and watch that. Herod played the role of saying that he wanted to worship Jesus, but he, he really wanted to kill him. He was, you don't put out a decree to kill all the young boys two years old and younger if you weren't searching for somebody to truly kill them. So he really wanted to kill him. I mean, he really wanted this gone. This was his plan. I think that the wise men knew this already too. And that is why they did not return to him. They didn't return to him. You never heard them even agree we coming back. They didn't return to him. And it never said that they agreed. But they must have also known the scripture themselves. Which they did. Anyone to read Micah 5 and 2? But you, Bethlehem, Ephraim, Though you are small among the clan of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Now, the things you've got to remember about this, and this is something we may not pay attention to, Israel has two towns named Bethlehem, okay? And during this era, Bethlehem of Galilee was located in the region to the tribe of Zebulun in northern Israel. And you can see that in Joshua. 1915. While Bethlehem of Judea, where Jesus was born, was located six kilometers, four miles, south of Jerusalem. You can see that in Matthew 2 and 1. The largest city in Judea and the capital of Israel. Bethlehem of Judea is also known as Ephraim. We don't always call it that. There were two Bethlehems at this time, and the Lord was so awesome with his word and knowing that nobody could stop his will that it was even known what Bethlehem Christ would be born in. So if you're looking at Herod, it ain't going to make a difference because he told you in the Old Testament where he was going to be born at. Also, the Lord is so awesome that in Hebrew, Bethlehem means house, B-E-T, that of bread, lehem, and Jesus is the bread of life. That's some strange stuff, because I always laugh when, you know, we, we hear how he named Isaac, because Sarah is laughing. We hear all these names that he puts, and they have a special meaning. And when you look at this, Jesus came from the house of bread, and he is the bread of life. Anybody want to read John 6, 47 through 50? I am the bread of life. Go ahead. They die. Uh -oh. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. It's funny. He's thinking about the names that the Lord had out there. 
Then you find out some of the meanings, you'd be like, the Lord got a sense of humor. <laughs> the house of bread, the bread of life. He told him which Bethlehem he was going to be born in. That's his plan. No matter what you got planned, Herod, God got something better. So you better check your plans with God's will. You know, we say, thy will be done. That means his will. So, ask Herod about it, because he found out. <laughs> the other thing that should have made Herod get right is because the wise men, they came to worship the Messiah, and if they traveled to worship him, then how come you didn't pick up on any of that? They traveled to come worship him. They knew who he was. And if they were wise men, they are described as wise men. He had a bad heart and treasure stored up in this world, and he didn't see the true gift that was being presented. He missed the whole thing because of what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's truly what evil, jealousy, yes. and greed will do to you. You know, it blinds you. It what blinded him. Yes. 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 He was missing out on this blessing, and Jesus didn't come to harm him. He came to save him. Mm -hmm. And he missed out on that. So in verse 9 it says, after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen, when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. So they left here, they went outside, the star said, here I am, and they followed the star. The guide that led to where the Messiah was. And, and we may forget how important this star was. This star was a provision of the Lord. And we may miss the importance of the star that was provided. It had been out for about two years. Because remember, they traveled under the star. They saw it rise. It was out ahead of them leading. It reappeared. And then it stopped exactly where Christ was at. There is no star that can do that unless the Lord tells it to. There's no star. Y'all don't see stars walking around, following you home, stopping at your house. This star was told to do that. Anybody want to read Isaiah 40 and 26? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these. He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Uh -oh. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Uh-oh, so he in charge of them. So I just threw this in here, just food for thought. Why you wish upon a star when you can pray to the one who created the star? Yeah. Don't wish upon a star. Pray, pray. But then somebody read nine, Job 9, 7 through 10 for me. He speaks to the sun and it does not shine. Hold up, hold up. That's a conversation. <laughs> Keep going. He seals off the light of the stars. Uh-oh, he can stop them from even hitting this earth. Keep he, going. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He can control everything. Keep going. He is the maker of the bear and Orion. Uh -oh. The uh, that, please, Pleiades. Pleiades mm -hmm. and the constellations of the uh -oh. south. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. They, they're talking about more constellations that we name, Orion, Bear, and all that. You know how we see the Big Dipper and all those things. But verse 10 says it all. <laughs> he performs wonders that cannot be fathomed. Could you imagine coming out your house and there's a star that just popped up and it's guiding you to go where you need to go? That's Wait, a wonder. Could you, <laughs> wouldn't you be like, what's going on? How's that happening? He, we couldn't understand it. We have enough problems putting high beams on and going to the right place. You got a star shining down, and then it goes and shines down on the Messiah. This is where he is. Wait. Right. But you know, the, he, he, uh, God did the same thing with the children of Israel, how he guided them through the wilderness. He would show up as a cloud and guided them during God the day. Him. How about that? Fire, he protected them at night. So, yeah, he, he's a provider. 
Yes. And, and he's, it, that's why I said verse 10 says it all. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed. Yes. Miracles that cannot be counted. We ain't even read all the miracles that have been performed. Even John said, I couldn't put them all in his book. Mm. So we, we see and read what we know as miracles, but there's so many more. And this is huge. The, the star, a constellation outside of the, go that way, follow me. How you being told to go? The Lord talked to me and told me to do this. All you got to do is go where that light tells you to go. Follow that star. We can't understand that. We would think it's a meteor. We would think the world was being destroyed. But the Lord said that light has got a purpose. That star got a purpose. And it took them where they needed to go. And you notice it says in Tim, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Joy. Uh-oh. When they saw the star, they had to know that the Lord was still with them and guiding them to the Messiah. And, and this is what the trip was about. The trip was not to go see Herod. The trip was not to go hang out with some friends. It was to go and worship the Messiah. They knew he was being born, and they were still being led by the Lord. So then you have to think about all that they knew and finally getting to see promised Messiah that would take away the sins of the world and all the prophets have spoken of and are now coming to be. And please don't forget that we had a blackout period at this time when we weren't talking with the Lord. He was not talking to us. And he sends this gift that will be the true king of the entire world throughout all generations. I was getting hyped typing this and thinking about it. I wrote it down. I didn't mean to. But <laughs> You get it going, you just keep going. But I was hyped up because you had to think about how special this was. Remember, we had a period of over 400 years where God wasn't talking to us. We get Jesus. Uh-oh, that's a better speech now. Everything is changed up now. Mm, I'm going to take that. Who knew to go see him? The wise men. How did they know? God told them to follow this star and they followed the star. Herod was plotting to kill him, trying to do his best to get this so-called king of the Jews away because he was king. It wasn't in his plans for you to do that, Herod. Even though you knew what was going on, it didn't benefit you to try to be destructive here. So we should be hyped up about all of this. Verse 11 says, on coming to the house, uh -oh, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, there are some things here that you have to notice about Jewish customs. If you notice, they said this time the child is expressed before the parent. Normally the parent is expressed before the child. Mm -hmm. You know? So, People of the East knew who Jesus was, and they never approached great kings without giving them something. Even if you look back to Solomon and Queen Sheba. Anybody want to read 1 Kings 10, 9 through 10? Praise be to the Lord our, your God, who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices, and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The Queen of Sheba brought gifts. And if King Solomon, if he received these gifts, then why would they not bring gifts to the true king of kings? Not just the true king, but the true king of kings. The top dog. He ain't king of earth. He is the king of everything. So it is said that the gifts all had special meanings of his divinity also. If you look at it, they offered them incense as their God. They knew that they must worship him. They knew this. They knew that they must worship him and that he was and is worthy to be worshipped. To be worshipped. Anybody want to read Exodus 37 and 8?
So he had to burn incense in worship in order to come before the Lord. It says, Aaron must burn fragrant incense every morning. He must burn incense again when he lights the lamps at the twilight. So incense will burn regularly. So they knew they had to worship. Then they brought gold as their king. Even if you think of earthly kings, they got some money. They got, they got gold and all these jewels and rubies. And they didn't misplace this. Anybody want to read Psalm 72, 10 through 15? May the kings of Tarshish and the distant shores bring tribute to him. Uh-oh. May the kings of Sheba. Uh-oh, the kings of who? Sheba. Keep going. And Seba present their gifts. Uh-oh. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. Which they will. For he will deliver the needy who cry out. Which he did. The afflicted who have no one to help. He was the answer. He will take pity on the weak and he did. And the needy and serve the needy from death. Uh oh, save us from death. We are all the needy, just to let you know. This ain't just somebody status in life on being wealthy or poor. We are needy of Christ. Amen. Keep going. Amen. He will rescue them from oppression and violence. Ooh. For precious is their blood in uh -oh. his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given him. Many people even pray for him and bless him all day long. Uh oh, may gold from Sheba. In case y'all wonder, imagine I fall under Sheba. From the Old Testament. They hurt people. And guess what they gave him? Gold. <laughs> so this all had a special meaning. And myrrh. Now, myrrh is a gift. I might not want because <laughs> it's it says it's united it's united to a human body, but it's subject to the suffering of, of death. And you know we get prepared for death. That's how they prepared people. But they understood. Now remember, they were wise men. They knew what his purpose was. They knew who he was. So they also had to know that there was a death that had to be done for him. So they took him from beginning to the end. Anybody want to read John 19, 38 through 39? Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Uh-oh. Whose body? Jesus' body. Okay, keep going. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Uh oh, now tell them what Nicodemus brought. Go ahead. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and, and aloes, about 75 pounds. It was for the preparation of his body. Mm -hmm. I imagine I know all these things. <laughs> yeah. Some things we can't fathom. The Lord had a plan, it was already in play. Herod could have done what he wanted to, the Lord already had it set up. He even had it set up for his son from beginning to end. Well, wait and see what he does with this, with the gifts. Because we always say, well, well he got this gold. What, what did they do? What happened? So these gifts held high esteem in their country, and they gave their best to the Messiah. These weren't no, okay, everybody got this type of gift. Oh, no. no, these were for a special purpose, a special person for royalty. For royalty. And they brought this. And they knew to bring it. And they traveled with this. And they didn't travel. Everybody thinks it was three wise men. They traveled in big herds. Big groups. It ain't no little group. You couldn't have carried all this with three people. Mm -hmm. So he gets it and goes to the parents. Because Jesus is too young to get it. You know, it goes to the parents. It's people that were in need. If you ever look at how we give, we give to, to the Lord. We don't give directly to the Lord. It ain't like he's sitting right here and we said, here you go, Lord. We give indirectly to his people and hope it provides for other people in need. He provides for us, but we got to do some work with the provisions. So it says in 12, and having been warned in a dream 
not to go back to Aaron. Uh-oh. Another warning in a dream. So the Lord provided again. They returned to their country by another route. Uh-oh, that's the Magi. Herod told them to do what? Come back to me. Yes. Give me a report on this dude, Jesus. Where is he at so I can come and worship him? But the Magi was like, we got some information in a dream. Not to go back your way. So, see, the Lord provided for them again. So, he was provided for the baby, the parents, all those that came to worship. He fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament. And now he got Herod getting ready to be utilized. And Herod don't even know he's being utilized yet. They had been warned in a dream, so there was no need to agree to come back to Herod because they were delivered from Herod's wickedness. Best believe Herod didn't have any good plans if they would have came back to him. He was already angry. So, so, so by they had been born in the dream, so they may not have known this plan and this scheme of Herod, because now it's, it's telling us that they were warned. They were so warned beforehand. They they didn't know really know. What they didn't was really going know on. what he was going to do. Yeah, yeah. But see, the the Lord just keeps His plan going. So He knew if you look, He kept providing for everybody. If you watch His steps, everybody kept being provided for. Even the gifts that he gave, which we're going to walk through, were a provision more than just acknowledging Jesus. And they were grateful acknowledging Jesus. Don't get me wrong, but he's going to provide the whole step of safety, too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And this goes to what you were speaking about previous lessons about wisdom, the different types of wisdom. Yes. It's, it speaks on that. I mean, because here you got the wise men. You know, it's, it's a wonder that they, they're very wise men, but they didn't catch uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Herod's yeah. plans, his evilness. But on the other hand, they had the world wisdom. But having God's wisdom is much greater than. Yeah, and this, this might have been, this was probably not supposed to be known to them just yet. Anyway, could you imagine if they would have known it, really known it, and walked in there, and Herod would have said something, one of them would have said, well... We shouldn't even go see Herod who called us in here, but you gotta go see him. Mm -hmm. Hey, and, and it wasn't a runaway. The Lord wasn't running away from this situation. He was gonna say, Yeah, you can see the wise man if you want to. You ain't gonna get nothing. You may know where he's gonna be born at. You won't get nothing. Because I got this plan. And I talked about this way before yeah. you came to me, Eric. So don't think you're gonna mess up my plan. I'm gonna use you to fulfill it. Yeah, I'm gonna use you, <laughs> and you don't even know it. So. They had been warned in their dreams, so there was no need to agree to come back to Herod because they were delivered from Herod's wickedness. Mm -hmm. See, Herod, we already knew Herod was evil. Mm -hmm. And you came to worship, hold up, let me put it this way. <laughs> you came to pay homage to a dude that's going to be the king, yeah. and I'm the king and you ain't paying this kind of homage to me? And you think I'm going to let you go and give him praises and money and all this stuff and you ain't gave nothing to me? Do you know who I am on this world? Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you did. That's right. So, so no, they they weren't going back to here. He was going to do something to them. He was evil. He was a bad man. So they escaped his wickedness, and it was through the provision of the Lord. So after they paid tribute, they went home. They didn't go the way Herod needed them to go. God was watching over Jesus at all times. At all times. And he was watching over the wise men. And they returned home another way. And it's funny that they went a different way. Because wasn't Jesus a new way for us? A safer way for us? A better way for us? The only way for us? How can we get the safety? How can we get the glory if we don't go the way of Jesus, the new way? So, even the Lord has mercy with some of these situations. It's like, hey, y'all don't go that way. Hear it over there. That's it. I can tell you where to go, though. Go that way. Go home safe. The new way I gave you. I'm providing you a new way so that you can make it to where you need to be safely. And if you didn't see it, the one that you just worshipped is the new way yes. so that you can make it home safe. And that new way was always had been around, but it's love. You can choose evil or you can choose love. Because let, let's not underestimate.
estimate when you were talking about this Herod, he was really an evil man. I mean, doing the, the uh, some reading on it, you know, where he killed his his own. I mean, his flesh and blood he killed. Herod you know, was a bad character. Yes, yeah, the whole family and it ran the family bloodline. They were evil, rotten to the core, you know, yes. folks. So we know we got some evil to go on. We know, hey, look, Jesus had one that was one of his disciples. He said, "I know you."
that is what I see with the wise men and with the fact that the way, that that way is who they travel to see. That way. Jesus was way. He was that way. If you ask what they did with the gifts, I can only think that they were used in their journey into Egypt. Okay? But the most important thing about the passage is they knew who the Messiah was and they fell down to worship him. Worship. They worshiped him and then they got up and were obedient. And they knew that because they worshiped. They knew who he was. They believed in what he said and who he was, who he was. And when they were met in the dream, you only get met by the Lord in dreams if you believe in When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph now. Uh-oh. There go my man Joseph. Mr. Don't get enough credit. <laughs> when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up. He said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. You know, Joseph was the only one that knew Jesus was coming to die for the sins of men. That's what, that's what they told him. They just told Mary that she was going to have the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Joseph got the exact purpose of Jesus. We discussed that last week. Now he gets another specific. Because it says, get up. Get up. Mm -hmm. Specific. Then it says, take the child and his mother. Get your family. And escape to Egypt. What? Can I go to Samaria? No. Can I go to? No. That's go to happened. Egypt. Yes. Stay there. Oh, can I leave when I'm going to? No. <laughs> Stay there until I tell you. That's right. This is very specific yes. for Herod. Now, here's the reason why I need you to do this. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. I'm providing a safe passage for you. I'm telling you when to get up. I'm telling you where to go and why you need to go. And every provision has been taken care of because you know that gold you got from the Magi? There's your provision for food, shelter, yes. clothing. So when you ask, well, what did they do with the gold? They had to live off of it. But here's a time when the gifts were needed. Now I got the gifts, when do I use them? Because you don't use your gifts all the time. You don't get to just say, oh, God gave me a gift and I use it anytime I want to. You got to ask, he'll tell you. Wait for instructions. So here's the time when the gifts were needed because they were poor. Uh-oh, we forget that they were poor. They wanted no help. <laughs> they weren't sitting in the top room with a jacuzzi. They was poor. Struggling. And what did the Magi bring them? Things of royalty. And what happened to be gold? How do you spend money with your gold? How do you get things with your gold? How do you stay hungry, feed yourself with your gold? How do you clothe yourself with your gold? How do you buy shelter with your gold? Uh oh, you mean the Lord had a plan and knew ahead of time that they was going to be safe and needed to go to Egypt with something? Uh-oh, Herod, your plan is looking even worse now. Because <laughs> you let the boys who was with you leave with his gifts. And guess what? They still being utilized now. They had a journey that was going to cost them money. They had to eat on the way there. Okay, so I got to go. If you look at this closely, the gifts given to Jesus indirectly through his parents were set up to help God's people. And that is how we truly give now. That's how we give. And look how it was used. Somebody in need, needed to get to safety, needed provision. That's what we're supposed to do. Give to those who need to help them through tough times, provision. If you look in Corinthians, you can see Paul even told the Corinthians to give to the church back the other side, because it was a poor church. It didn't have the money that the Corinthians did. We give to those in need, and the Lord provides. Yes, he, he provides, and he provided here. We got gold. 
You just you don't ever hear about Mary and Joseph bragging about what they have. You just hear about them going. And they went. So Herod still looked to kill the Messiah. He was still looking to do his thing. But the other thing you got to remember about Egypt now, and this is how good God is, there were a lot of Jews in Egypt. Uh-oh. And out of the reach of Herod, the curious thing is Jesus went to the land where we were in bondage at. Remember, Egypt wasn't a place for us. We was being hung up, tied down, beat, killed, made work, everything. Moses was utilized to deliver us from there. But now, I got to go back to this place of bondage? Well, it was that way before. I did what I do, says the Lord. <laughs> see, I changed them people. I changed that way. And you can see, there were a lot of Jews there. You fit right in. You ain't no sore thumb standing out because they Jews there too. Oh, man, you mean, hold up. I'm going to people that know my custom and worship you, that look like me, that talk like me, that understand what we have to do. And yeah, that's where you go. But this was a land of bondage. I changed that too. It's a safe haven now. It was a place that wasn't safe for you, but now it's a safe haven. So God had changed Egypt. Ooh. Now, the other thing you might not realize is this was also the only time that Jesus was out of Palestine. This was it when he was a child. That's why I put that map on there. You look at that map, you can see. This was the only time he was out of his area. And it was because he was his parents were directed to take him there. So, with Joseph. You know, Joseph. He got up because he was obedient. Wasn't he obedient last week? Yes, he was. I guess his obedience didn't change. <laughs> so he got up. He took the child and his mother during the night and he left for Egypt. Joseph's obedience was immediately. It wasn't low up a Lord of After I knocked a few hours off or when the light come up and when the rooster crowed. No, he got up. And took the child and his mother. He left here during the night to do as he was told. And if you think about it, this also probably helped him and the family go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine him going out in the daytime and, hold up, is that a, a baby? Two years old or younger? Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, Herod's killing them. So he went at night. The Lord keep providing for this dude because... He woke him up at nighttime. It wasn't like he said, hey, take your time. When you wake up after you brush your teeth and wash your face, take a shower and all that, then you walk on out. He said, get up. And thank God, Joseph has continued to be obedient. And he got up. So then in 15 it says, where he stayed until the death of Herod. Uh-oh. The Lord told him how long to stay there. And guess what? He stayed there until the death of Herod. Uh-oh, provision, safety again. But look what Herod did. Because this part, this last part, is about Herod. Because Herod was the reason Jesus had to go to Egypt. He was doing his thing. The Lord had the plan already. The Lord knew he was going to send his son to Egypt because of this wickedness. And, and I don't want you to get it wrong. The Lord could have said, uh-uh, that ain't it. But he was going to show man, you just man. You just man. No matter what your plot, no matter what your plan, wickedness, evil, it does not conquer. Not here. So he says, and so it was fulfilled what the Lord has said through the prophet. See, the Lord had already said this through a prophet. Yes. So here was just a piece in the call. In the call. <laughs> and it says, out of Egypt, I called my son. The family stayed in Egypt until King Herod died. With the death of King, the King Herod, the other prophecy was fulfilled because the nation of Israel, remember the nation of Israel came out of Egypt, and now the son of God would come out of Egypt as stated in Hosea. Anybody want to read Hosea 11.1? Remember this chapter in Hosea, he was 
talking about God's love for Israel. And he says, when Israel was a child, when it was young, when it wasn't listening, I still loved you. And I love you so much that the same path that you took out of Egypt to come in this way, my son's going to come out of Egypt as you did. So Harry, man, Harry had no clue of all of this because he wasn't paying attention. And he couldn't stop it. There was no stopping what God had planned from the get-go. If he spoke through his prophets, his word has been true and strong through and through. He ain't lied about it. He ain't even hit it. This was out there. This word has been, was out there. The prophet spoke of it. Herod talked to the religious people. He talked to the magi. He couldn't stop it. There was nothing he could do. He could be involved. Remember, like I said, Judas thought he did something special. You didn't do nothing but work in God's plan. You will not outdo God. And to see what the Messiah was here for, it says international honor for the king of the world because they travel from all over. But the truth of the matter is he is the king of all the world. So if you want to say anything international, he's just multinational. He is everybody's king. If you believe or you don't. But, as we said, the atheists don't believe. They do because they're trying to disprove who he is. And it's funny when you hear them all talk about, well, no, he could have done this, he could have done that. He, they bring him up. Then when they can't prove it, they say, well, they lost. There are things that we can't fathom. There's a verse we just read that even points to that. Stop trying to think like we got. We got a role. We got a job. Go out and make disciples. That's our job. Believe. Be obedient. We fall short. But don't think you're going to mess up God's plan. That's why we keep praying. Thy will. It ain't our will. It will never be our will because we ain't righteous without him. He gives power. We receive it. He gives blessings. We receive them. He answers prayers. We receive them. If you notice, we keep receiving. We can't give nothing but praise. And we can't praise him enough when we do that. So understand that man is just a fleshly being that will come to an end. And if you don't have the new way, that Messiah, your eternal end is going to be bad. So get with the new way. That is the new way to eternal life. That's why he said that he don't want any of us to perish. But if you don't call alone, you ain't going to be there. You won't be there. You have to believe. You have to want this. And it is a struggle. It ain't no walk in the park, but he never said it was going to be a walk in the park. You think Joseph probably wouldn't have said, hey, Lord, you know you can destroy them. Just get rid of King Herod. Get rid of them. No, it's a, it's a way he has said. And the good thing is he let Herod be in the plan again. I like when he's let wickedness walk around and think he's getting ready to do something big. And then he said, whoop, no Judas, whoop, no Pharaoh, no Herod. He just keeps popping it <laughs> and letting you see that no matter what you think you got going on, my will will prevail in all things. And that's what we pray about. Thy will be done. Amen? Amen. Questions, comments, concerns? Anything? Quick, quick comment, you know, just listening to the lesson and listening to the teaching, it's just, uh, it's refreshing, you know, reminds us that on our journey uh, in life, you know, God, he protects us. He protects us on our journey. You know, he looks, yep. looks after us, looks over us, uh, covers us, you know, um, but it's so important that, as you had just stated, we submit to his will. Yeah. We, you know, to be obedient to his directions yeah. and to his word. And by doing so, you know, but let's remember, it doesn't exclude hardship. Nope. It doesn't exclude danger nope. and trouble. Nope. That's going to come. But when we're walking in his will, we are protected through that. Right. You know, so that's the, what I uh, pull out of this lesson is just, thank you, Lord. It's a blessing to know that we have a Savior. Yeah. God sent us a Savior. 
true Savior that's watching over us our every step, guiding us through life's journey. I thank you for that. Yeah. I still laugh at the fact that the Magi, <laughs> he told them to go this way. And he provided a safe passage. And then he had Jesus here, who was a new way for the safe passage. And every time I used to look at it, I never saw it. And then I said, hold up. He provided for the Magi a safe way away from Herod, acting a fool. <laughs> and then we had the new way, the new passage for the world. And if you follow it, like the Magi followed their way and got back home, you'll get back home. Amen. Amen. So God provides. We just, we got to want to follow him. And as you see, he provided for everybody in this whole pathway process. Yeah. He took Joseph and Mary with the gifts. We knew what they meant, but man, how, how are we going to get there? We poor, they living here, everybody work. Well, he provided. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He just said, get up and do what I said. I already got you covered. So don't worry. He got us if we just go his way. Amen? Amen. 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 Any announcements? Um, quick announcement. Uh, Tuesday, the 22nd, will be the last day of the year for the food boxes. Uh, we'll be starting the same time at noon, and we'll be here until the last box is passed out. We encourage you to come on out and, and um, participate, grab a box, and if you know of anyone, a neighbor, a friend that uh, uh, has a need uh, or needs a, a, a help up, a hand up, you know, come on out and look out for them and, and bless them that the Lord has blessed us with. Amen. Hey, um, put a special prayer out for our young people. Talking about the death of a young man last night, the night before. Um, and, and you you get troubled feelings when you see our young people dying. Yeah. Um, and we don't want them dying. They ain't supposed to be dying, not by our hand. Um, so pray for our young people. Pray, pray for our parents to have the strength and courage to get with their young people. Them closer to you in these times right now. If you see things are bad, and we know things is happening out there, mm -hmm. keep them closer to you. Yeah. Treat them like they brand new infant and they need you to hold them and pick them up and carry them. But don't let them be in the sight of danger. Danger is walking right up on them with a purpose. Um, so I'd ask for special prayers for that. For you young people, I ask for special prayers for parents who are dealing with I got a call this week at work. Um, one of our members praying for her, I told her to call me about the kids. Um, I mean, we done had them at the house numerous times, but all of them need some kind of assistance. Um, and we need to pray for them. We need to help them. We need to reach out. Um, and for some, it may be a little harder to reach out to people to help them, so maybe we need to reach out to them. Um, but we got to get our young people. They are being taken away various different forms from jail to death, and both ways is a bad way to go. Um, we need to help them in school, but we really need to start praying for them and doing for them. Amen. Because, Amen. hey, we ain't going to have a future if they don't make it. And we need them to be there. We need them to be the new minds of the world that we're going to be living in as older folks. And we show one a better mind than what we got. Amen. Um, anybody want to pray us out? Yeah, Heavenly Father, we just come to you once again to say thank you. Thank you for just allowing your Holy Spirit to be with us as we went over the, our Sunday school lesson for the day. Truly learn just how much you love us, how much you protect us, how much you cover us, how much you love us. You gave us, you, give, you have given us a Savior, and that is Jesus, and we thank you that. We thank you. Now let us go and just share the things that we, we know of, the things that you have taught us. Share with those who will lend it here. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we just ask for a special prayer today over our, our youth. Yes, Continue yes. To, to watch over them, yes. to, to cover them, yes. Father God, to protect them. Yes. For this 
is a world that we live in right now that is it's dangerous out there. There's so much going on and taking place that their young minds, they just don't understand just how dangerous it is. It is. So we ask you to intervene and touch their hearts. Guide them. Guide their footsteps in the right direction. Lead them in the path that they should go. Thank you. Thank you for doing so right now. So, Father God, we ask your spirit to carry us on into our next service. To be with us as we render praises, songs of praise to our Lord and to our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We look forward to a word, a word from you. Touch our hearts. Let it build us up, encourage us, and guide us as well, Father God. We thank you for all those that, that came aboard on Facebook and that will continue with us on the next service. And we thank you for all the leaders that are taking time out to make sure that your service goes forward. We thank you, God, for all that you provided, all you do. We thank you for hearing this prayer. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen.